So getting paid to go and work abroad for a couple of months sounds great, doesn't it? But is it a financially viable way to earn a living? Hi guys, my name's Matt and I've worked three ski seasons in the mountains, one in France, one in Austria and one in Japan. Two of those I was a holiday rep and another one I was a chalet concierge. But today I want to talk about how much I earned on my last ski season. Um, I get asked about this topic quite a lot by you, the audience, in the comments sections and through messaging on my Facebook and my Instagram accounts. Now, I think it's very important to make you guys aware of what you could be getting yourselves into. Doing a ski season is an incredible experience, but you ultimately have to be able to afford to live whilst you're out there. Um, and there are many like myself who want to have a career working in the mountains and you need to be able to learn how to, I guess, sort of uh, budget and, and plan for that financially. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys and tell you straight away that my total gross pay um, during my time in Japan as a chalet concierge was 621,661 yen. Now, if I convert that with the current exchange rate to British pounds, GBP, sterling, whatever you want to call it, that comes to just over 4,000 pounds, 4,097 pounds, 74 P. Uh, my basic salary, my basic rate was 1,300 yen an hour. Now that was about £8.59 per hour. The UK minimum wage for people over the age of 23 is currently £8.91. Now this does change a bit each year and given that I went out to Japan in 2019, if you add in a little bit of wriggle room then, it works out that I was on minimum wage. Um, the contract was for four and a half months minimum and I got paid in the middle of the month each month around the 15th of the month. Bonuses, there there were no bonuses to speak of, um, but I was working in sort of the high-end chalet market there, and so occasionally a guest would leave a bit of a tip which might get shared out between um, the various workers during that week. Nothing much to speak of, but a little bit of extra beer and food money. The deductions though, this is something that's quite important to make you aware of. So firstly, tax. In accordance with Japanese law, as a foreign worker, I had to pay 20.42% on my income. Now this was taken through withholding, which is not an uncommon practice. And all in all, I gave 126,943 uh, yen in tax. If you convert that to the UK, that was £836.37p. So when you remove that from the figure that I gave at the start of the video, um, then that left me with 400,944 yen 718 or £3,264.87p. Another big expense was accommodation. Now I paid 50,000 yen per month or 330 pounds in uh, rent for my accommodation. Uh, it, because of the disruptions caused by COVID, I only paid for four months. So 200,000 yen, uh, 1,319 pounds, give or take, uh, leaving me with 294,000 yen. Because especially on your first ski season, it's not uncommon that your outgoings are far greater than what you have in incoming. And I didn't save anything on my first season and a lot of people don't save anything either. Um, the more seasons I've done, the easier I've found it is to save money because I recognize that, um, you know, there's certain areas where I don't need to spend as much. I certainly don't party as regularly as I did in my first season. I calculated that I spent 160,000 yen during my time in Japan um, or 1,055 pounds on food, alcohol, uh, a bit of transport expenses and other things like ski servicing. So I've not included my lift pass though in any of that because that was another big expenditure. The reason why I've not done that was because I bought that separately right at the start of the season before I'd even had my first paycheck. So saving money, uh, I had roughly 130,000 left when I came back to the UK. That's about 850 pounds, which I thought was quite reasonable. I was very proud 
with being able to save that it sort of marked a bit of an improvement in my in my approach to being out in the mountains um, and that went towards buying a car when I got home so I could able to move around for the time I've been stuck here so is a working a ski season financially viable that's the question I asked at the start of the video and it's the question I'm asking you now as we wrap things up um, personally I found it not to be a sustainable way and when I, I, I say this in a ski season context I'm talking the jobs like the reps the hosts the driving even if I put more focus into having a summer season job alongside the winter season job, it still doesn't match for me personally, my ambitions and where I want to get to for my lifestyle working in the mountains and the financial freedoms that I want to have with that. Um, I deliberately pivoted towards the luxury ski market when I went out to Japan and I've also been trying to be better at being financially literate and better with numbers and also business it doesn't come naturally to me um but it's a it's a journey you know this whole thing is a journey and that's why i'm documenting it on the camera here for you guys and and also for me um but thank you very much for watching today's video i hope you've enjoyed it let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section below uh, don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button all things to keep the momentum of this channel going and growing as we move into the autumn and the winter months if you want to know more about working in a ski season then i've created a playlist for you guys here somewhere and that goes through a number of the topics such as um, the different types of jobs how to find a ski season job what's the best type of accommodation and much much more so go check those out straight after this one here um, uh, but thank you very much for watching take care and i will see you next time